Welcome back to Ripe Wave Audio Channel, where we explore all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and in this session we will go over how to position the base layer of speakers for 5.1, 7.1, 9.1, and beyond surround sound. In the last video we reviewed how speakers have been configured for surround sound in the cinema over the last 80 years. If you missed that video, I invite you to check it out as it provides a good understanding of which environments we are trying to emulate at home. Now we turn our attention to our home theater systems. At home, most of us have more constrained listening environments to watch movies and listen to music. Starting with the rooms being much smaller. As our home screens are a fraction of the size, having discrete five speaker channels across the front, as with Cinerama, Todd AO, or SDDS, is not necessarily needed for smooth panning from left to right behind the screen. But you may enjoy similar benefits from front wide channels placed forward of the screen. Looking at the standard home theater configurations from 5.1 to 20 speaker 11.1.8 setups, we see the same base five channel placement is recommended. When 5.1 was initially introduced, placement of the surround speakers was flexible with the choice of placement on the side or rear walls. However, with the introduction of new configurations supporting more speakers, guidance for the surrounds is now standardized around side placement. Therefore, it is possible to start with a 5.1 configuration and move to more speakers over time without having to reposition speakers as you go. In this video, we are focusing on the base near ear level speakers. We will not cover height, ceiling, or speakers which reflect off the ceiling as the upper layers can be addressed separately. Subwoofer placement is more dependent on room acoustics and their ideal placement is less connected with straight geometry as with the base layer. Given how subwoofer placement can be independent from the base and upper layers, they too can also be addressed independently. Looking back to RipeWave Audio's 25 years of video formats, we see that there have been numerous surround sound technologies released for the home market during this period, with a number of channels, with the number of channels more than doubling so that even a 16-channel processor may not be able to handle today's most ambitious configurations. However, consistency on how the base ear level speaker layer is arranged, along with the possibility to upmix up or downmix source material to accommodate more or less speakers than encoded, has enabled home theater enthusiasts to get the most of what they have installed. For example, an Atmos movie can be downmixed to 5.1, and a Dolby digital movie can be upmixed to 13 channels for DTS X system. On this graphic, we see many of the formats released over the past 25 years and can see the similarities. All support the base five channels and those with more channels support the placement of the first seven channels consistently. Height ceiling speakers or ceiling reflective modules were introduced as the nine channel barrier was crossed, but with less consistency. Even those formats leverage the five or seven channel base layouts. We have color coded the speakers in the layout icons as follows. Black squares represent base speakers, purple trapezoids for height, and orange circles for ceiling mounted speakers. 
the dot one LFE channel is shown as a unfilled square in the center, which all formats support today. As such, it is possible to design a home theater around a standard five to seven channel layout, which, is, which has a high likelihood for future compatibility. The choice to design in upper layers has some risk of future incompatibility with recommended placement. However, the object-based modeling of the latest formats can facilitate more flexible placement of those upper channels. For this video, I am using my own home theater as an example for speaker layout planning. You will want to select a room for your theater that is ideally not perfectly square and large enough to accommodate your desired configuration without having to place speakers too close. You generally want to speak, you want to space speakers at least six feet apart when possible. Rooms that have less openings, doors, and windows are also easier to manage for two reasons. One, they typically have better sound acoustics, and two, they can continuous walls make it easier to play speakers and televisions according to recommended guidelines. With the room selected, it is best to produce a scale drawing of the room to aid with speaker placement. Use whatever tool you feel comfortable with, whether it be a computer base, Visio in my case, or traditional mechanical methods using rulers and protractors. My room is in a finished basement and is on the largest size at 26 feet 8 inches by 12 feet 6 inches. While larger rooms can accommodate more speakers with good spacing, using larger speakers may be necessary simply to fill the space with sound. The challenge with this room is that one side has a number of openings and doors for closets, a hall, and an office, which constrain speaker placement. The areas marked in red will not support any type of speaker mounting, while the areas in yellow can accommodate the placement of some types of speakers. The idea is to strike the right balance. It is not often when someone can design a home theater from the ground up and place speakers in preference to aesthetics or other room functions. Compromise usually comes into place, so don't get too worried if you can't completely align with recommended guidance. Furthermore, that guidance will not always produce the best sonic results. It is simply intended to get you close without using advanced engineering. This roughly 333 square feet area also has counter height cabinets situated on each end which impact the design. Determining the positions for your screen and main seating is a great place to start. My current setup is with a 65 inch television and a seating position 12 and a half feet away. This results in a 21.5 degree viewing angle, which is below the recommended practices for both SEMPTI and THX. THX wants a viewing angle of at least 26 degrees, while SEMPTI sets their minimums higher at 30 degrees. In order to comply the seating position can be moved almost five feet closer to a distance of 7.3 feet, achieving the recommended THX 36 degree viewing angle. However, before making this move, I want to consider the impact on speaker placement. And I know that one wall is a challenge. Another option is to install a larger screen. Using a viewing distance calculator, such as the one I found at www.projectorscreenstore.com, I am able to learn that a screen over 112.7 inches 
will also satisfy THX recommendations without changing the seating position. It should be noted that there is also general guidance as to viewing distance needed to overcome pixelation. That guidance indicates a shorter minimum viewing distance for UHD 4K televisions at 1.5 times the diagonal than that required for 1080p televisions at 2.x times the diagonal. The height for the base level speakers should be aligned with ear level of someone sitting down with that of the speaker tweeters, typically 40 to 48 inches. The exception is surround speakers, which is recommended to be placed one to two feet above seated ear level, as surrounds are closest to the main listening position. The goal is to have the speakers disappear with the sound simply hovering in space. My surround Polk LSI FX speakers are bipolar, which is designed, which is a design meant to help achieve that goal. Albeit, some more recent guidance now favors direct firing surrounds placed at ear level. The television screen should be placed with the center of the screen at or close to eye level, which is the same as ear level. When placing the screen, care needs to be taken not to block any of the speaker drivers unless you are using an acoustically transparent screen and a projector, which better facilitates the ear level placement of both the front speakers and the screen. With the initial plan for seating and television placement done, it is easier to proceed with the speaker placement. However, you may find it necessary to run through a few iterations until you have it all balanced out to your preferences. At this point, I go back to my basic room drawing with the seating and television locations indicated. Starting with a 5.1 layout, I work my way up to more complex arrangements. Dolby and THX provide guidance on speaker angles calculated from the main listening position. The two standards have some values in common, and I use 22.5 degrees from the center channel speaker, which serves, along with the seating position, as the reference point for the front channels. A 110 degree angle is used for the surround channels. These positions provide a starting position for placing these channels. Overlaying with these values onto my floor plan, we can choose a practical location for the front and surround. For the front channels, placement at 22.5 degrees is possible, but with the surrounds, I need to align slightly past the 110 degree THX guidance due to wall openings. Moving to 7.1, we add in back channels. Dolby has these at 135 to 150 degrees, while THX simply states to place on the back wall. Given the long length of my room, the Dolby angles are too wide unless I am willing to place my Polk LSIM book bookshelves on pedestals. Knowing that that is not an option with our kids sharing the space, I am opting for placement on the back, cap back wall cabinets, which is compliant with THX and not too far off of Dolby specifications. A 9.1 base configuration is not so common as front wide speakers are only present with less common decoding standards such as Odyssey DSX upmixer and the more advanced Dolby Atmos setups and not discreetly encoded on movies. These front wide speakers come in at 50 to 70 degrees while this range hits one of the warning areas on the sidewall, I could arrange a bookshelf at a location closer to the front to accommodate 
a slightly out of compliance location. With the standard Dolby Atmos 11.1.8 configuration, they have introduced two more channels at ear level and labeled them surround one. These sit between the surround and back speakers at 117 to 127 degrees. As your brain more easily detects sound in front of you than behind you, I am not convinced these additional channels will do much to enhance the experience. Furthermore, I do, have, do not have space to accommodate surround one speakers and will leave these channels off of my long range plan. Given my room, I feel that a 7.1 base is best for now and that I might entertain a 9.1 base in the future as the concept of front wide channels could make a noticeable difference. If I were to design an entirely new room, I might want to start with a 25 by 15 foot room without the end cabinets in the front. I would limit openings to one to two doors in positions that do not interfere with speaker placement. Finally, I may also consider moving to an acoustically transparent screen as it would provide wider viewing angles from the room's midpoint and enable me to match all front three speakers and align their tweeters to ear level. In either my current or dream arrangement, the use of upper channels and subwoofers will be in my long range plans. And a 7.1 or 9.1 base will serve me well regardless. As we conclude this video on speaker placement, I want to remind you that every room is different and you need to accommodate your design challenges, preferences and lifestyle. There are acoustic considerations as well for each speaker having its own sweet spot based on distance from the wall, from each other, toe in, angles, etc. Feel free to experiment and deviate from your drawn concept placement. Experimentation, of course, is not as easy with in-wall and in-ceiling designs, and wall-mounted speakers can be difficult to move due to wiring, etc. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this Right Wave audio channel and be sure to select the bell icon so you will be notified as soon as the next video is posted.